Hello, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Daniel Covey, and I am a Disaster Recovery Solutions Architect here at AWS. And today I'll be going over how to upgrade your resilience uh, by upgrading from Cloud Endure DR to AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery, or AWS DRS. Now, on the agenda today, we'll have uh, some conversations about what the Cloud Endure retirement uh, timelines will look like. Uh, the Cloud Endure to DRS upgrade, as well as uh, evaluating DRS, how to, under, how to understand the upgrade path, getting help with upgrades, uh, success stories, and of course, next steps. Now, what does the retirement information for Cloud Endure look like? Uh, so currently, the, uh, the the retirement timeline for Cloud Under DR is March 31st of 2024. Uh, now we do have some resources available for you, which we'll be going over uh, here shortly, which is an, uh, an upgrade assessment tool, uh, the upgrade tool itself, as well as some partner programs to help you along in the upgrade journey. Uh, but some just, just some key uh, dates to note, September 1st of 2023, we will no longer be able to register for new Cloud Under DR accounts in any AWS region, except for uh, China region. Uh, and then December 1st, 2023, there will be no new agent installations uh, allowed. Um, of course, upgrading the existing agents will be supported. Uh, and then finally, March 31st, 2024, Cloud Under DR will be retired in all AWS regions except for China regions. Uh, that means that the uh, service, the, the tool will no longer work um, and we'll need to um, adjust the DR tool at that point. Uh, so it's good to keep these in mind, uh, and really the, the idea here is to upgrade uh, the tool as soon as you can, but definitely before this March 31st, 2024 date. So uh, what are the steps to evaluating uh, the Cloud Under DR to DRS upgrade? First off is you want to evaluate AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. Um, now, since you've used Cloud Endure DR in the past, um, it's good to note that AWS DRS um, is uh, pretty close to the same as far as architecture goes, right? So you'll see here, uh, we've got an architecture diagram, which look, should look very similar. Uh, it's still agent-based. So you're installing an agent on each, on each server, replicating that to your low-cost staging area, and then maintaining that uh, consistent uh, block-level replication while that replication is uh, going on, you'll be taking EBS snapshots on the back end, uh, which then will, will then be retained uh, for the amount of days that you've decided to maintain, very similar to Cloud Endure. Uh, default is seven days, can go all the way up to 365 days if you would like. And then once uh, all of the uh, data has been replicated and you're, and you're in your continuous sync mode, you'll have the ability to do either a drill or initiate either a drill or a failover. Uh, so this is very, again, very similar to Cloud Endure where you're able to launch those. Um, and by launching something, say launching a drill, uh, you will see a, uh, a notification in your, uh, in your console uh, in Elastic Disaster Recovery that, that lets you know that you've tested this machine within the past 90 days. So again, all very similar uh, on-prem to, to AWS, multi-cloud, uh, AZ to AZ, AWS to AWS, all of those are supported uh, deployment methods for Elastic Disaster Recovery. Uh, so it should should be an, an easy transition as it comes to uh, understanding the tool itself. Now, some key highlights to this uh, is that DRS is the next generation of Cloud Endure DR, and it's natively integrated with the AWS platform. Um, so that means that uh, any services that AWS uses will have, as time goes on, we'll have better integration, integration with those. Um, Currently, we have integration with CloudTrail and CloudWatch, um, and so and, and uh, uh, CloudWatch events. Uh, so there's more integrations with AWS services, and more will come in the future. Uh, DRS is the DR service of choice if you're going to AWS, and all new features will only be added to DRS, not Cloud Endure DR. Uh, and we'll talk about what the, uh, some of those new features that have already been released that are not currently available in Cloud Endure. One of the uh, key feature changes that uh, AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery has brought is the ability to use private networks uh, to replicate uh, this data without ever having to go into the public internet. 
Uh, so we do this using AWS Direct Connect if you're if you're on premise uh, VPN, really any any private connection to AWS. Uh, you can route your traffic over that for the actual replication. And then all of the uh, the endpoints that need to be reached uh, can be done over the the uh, private links available for you for Elastic Zest Recovery, EC2, and S3. Previously, these had to go out over public internet. Uh, now they can all go through the private network utilizing the AWS private link system. Now, some things we'd like to compare to show you some of the differences of, between the two services is uh, AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery uh, is directly part of the AWS Management Console and utilizes the AWS APIs, SDKs, the uh, AWS command line interface. Uh, so if you have other workflows in place for uh, AWS services, it's a lot simpler to, uh, to implement it, the Elastic Disaster Recovery into those, uh, those workflows. We've also changed away from the legacy uh, projects and blueprints, uh, et cetera, in Cloudinator and moved to the AWS standard me mechanism of tagging and accounts. Uh, and then launch settings are, are handled through EC2 launch templates now, as opposed to uh, the uh, proprietary blueprint system we used to use. Um, you can also manage launch settings at scale. Uh, so it used to be that you had to manage each blueprint individually. Uh, with Elastic Disaster Recovery, you can now manage uh, manage them at scale. You can set default launch templates um, uh, for any new machines that are added. So overall, making that that quality of life better for uh, configuring DRS after the uh, agents have been installed. <clears throat> um, as far as user management and monitoring goes, uh, we're now using the standard IAM. Uh, roles uh, that are available, users are still, uh, IAM users are still available, but uh, we, you can utilize IAM roles. You can use um, uh, uh, Amazon STS so for, uh, for um, temporary credentials to do, to do installations. Uh, we, again, we're built directly into, or we uh, have integration directly with CloudTrail and CloudWatch, EventBridge. All of those are directly uh, integrated with Elastic Disaster Recovery to make it easier to manage and monitor the solution. Uh, no scan and reboot uh, was only supported for Windows operating systems in Cloud Endure with Elastic Disaster Recovery. Windows and Linux are all uh, are both uh, supported for that. So when you reboot a server, whether it's for patching, whether uh, there was some sort of issue, uh, there's no need to rescan after after the fact. Uh, consumption model is the same though, right? Hourly metering um, via the AWS standard. The great thing about that is it's just built directly into the billing system for AWS. You don't have to go through the marketplace subscription. As far as pricing, it's the same. Uh, 0.028 cents per hour per server. Um, the control plane uh, used to be uh, supported in, uh, in uh, US East. Uh, now it's supported in all uh, recovery regions that are available with Elastic Disaster Recovery, um, and it has higher availability due to not needing, uh, not having cross-regional dependencies. And I already spoke about the public internet access, but it's not required anymore. We can utilize AWS Private Link and Direct Connect for replication, uh, which is a significant security benefit. Now. The temporary IAM credentials, as I mentioned earlier, are, are available through uh, through STS, uh, Simple Token Service, excuse me, Security Token Service, um, and uh, region-to-region -region replication and recovery are both supported. Right? They, they were supported before, they are supported now. Uh, now, the non-disruptive failback testing is interesting, right? So it wasn't uh, available in Cloud under DR. Within DRS, you can actually test your failback uh, not to the original source machine, but to uh, a machine that's been dedicated for that process. Uh, so whether that's uh, you know a dev machine, test machine, what have you, you have the ability to uh, do non-disruptive failback testing for that. Uh, a lot of similar things here, region, region failback, large, large scale failback automation, separate accounts, separate accounts for staging and launching, all of those, uh, everything on this is all the same as it used to be, right? Um, so still being able to cover you um, in all of these scenarios. 
Uh, now, recovery region support, Cloud Under DR does st- does uh, support cl- uh, GovCloud and the chi- and China regions. Uh, currently, Elastic Disaster Recovery does not. Uh, however, it is on the roadmap to be coming out. Uh, so if you do need assistance uh, with GovCloud workloads and doing the upgrade to Elastic Disaster Recovery, please reach out to your account manager uh, and we'll get you in touch with the right team to walk you through what steps are available for you. Um Compliance programs, right? Uh, we have all the all of the compliance that uh, Cloud Endure did before pl- and some uh, that you can see here, uh, and then of course stop and start replication are still available. All right, and so the uh, region region VPC stack creation, where you're able to uh, have uh, Cloud Endure capture what your VPC configuration is and, and launch that for you in the recovery region is also included in Elastic Disaster Recovery as well as the uh, automatic detection of the disks. Uh, we don't have AWS out, Outpost support as of yet. It is on the roadmap, uh, so it is coming, but currently if you are utilizing uh, Cloud Endure to replicate between AWS Outposts, uh, you would still want to utilize that until that feature becomes available within Elastic Disaster Recovery. And then recovery plans, it says, see this post, this blog post. Basically, what that means is it's not built directly into the service yet. However, we have a simple to follow blog post while that feature is becoming available within uh, Elastic Disaster Recovery. And the recovery plans are uh, basically uh, telling the service which uh, uh, servers or groups of servers that you want to launch first and then which ones you want to f- launch afterwards and so forth. Uh, so the blog post goes into that uh, and more to come on that piece. So what upgrade paths do you have available, right? Um, so you'll be going from Cloud Endure DR. You can then run the upgrade assessment tool, and I'm going to go into all of these. Uh, the upgrade assessment tool basically tells you uh, how much work is going to be involved in upgrading to Elastic Disaster Recovery, what you need to do, uh, if there's any configuration changes, right? So if you have Blueprint configuration changes uh, are configured and there's uh, some disparity between that and uh, and DRS, uh, it'll let you know what needs to be done. Um, if it's uh, if you're say using GovCloud, right? The upgrade assessment tool will let you know that th- that project is not available to, to be uh, upgraded uh, automatically to Elastic Disaster Recovery. You'll need to do uh, a clean install. But those are some options. Those are some things that can pop up. But th- there's not a, a lot of them left. Uh, but there is a possibility there is that will give you a, either a warning and you can continue with caution or an error and you will need to do either change the configuration or uh, do a clean install. Uh, so you do have the upgrade tool, which is uh, once you've done the assessment, you can then run that tool, start the upgrade, finalize the upgrade, um, and then uh, move over to Elastic Zest Recovery. And what that looks like is uh, you can run the you can start run the upgrade tool. It will copy the most recent snapshot of Cloud Endure into your AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery account, um, and uh, copy, and so that way you don't have to reseed all of your data. Once uh, that copy is completed, you can then say that you want to swap over to Elastic Disaster Recovery. We'll stop replicating with Cloud Endure, start replicating with Elastic Disaster Recovery. Do a rescan, make sure we have all the blocks available to us, and then push any blocks that have changed during the process. Overall, the big benefit of this is um, actually I'll go to the benefits right here. Uh, The big benefits to the upgrade tool is that your historical data is retained without needing to re-replicate it. Um, And, uh, you know, the majority of the configurations, as I said, are replicated over to Elastic Disaster Recovery. There's not too much that uh, is not available anymore. Uh, And there's a lower RPO impact due to that those historical snapshots being retained and only having to replicate the, the changes that have been going on since the uh, since the upgrade process has started. Uh, some of the cons, right, are it can take more time than just doing a, a clean install, and it may require more pre-configuration before moving to AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. Uh, so the other option, like I said, is a clean install, which is basically uninstalling Cloud Endure and reinstalling, or and, and installing with, um, installing the Elastic Disaster Recovery agent. Uh, so the pros for that are it's faster, right? It can be faster um, to actually go through the process um, of just uninstalling and then installing the agent. Uh, there's fewer steps needed to upgrade, and it's a clean slate to start your DR deployment, right? So as you've been working with Cloud Endure, if there's been times where you thought, 
maybe next time we should do something, uh, make a change or do something differently. Maybe make it, uh, our process more secure, what have you. Uh, this is, gives you the opportunity to do that. Uh, now, the cons for that is that the historical snapshots are not copied over, right? So they stay in Cloud Endure until you delete them. Um, and so the, the data does need to be re-replicated uh, as, as an initial sync. During that initial sync, the RPO is increasing because you're unable to uh, launch these machines in, during initial sync. So however long it takes to push that initial seed of data is how, how long your RPO would be uh, until it's available. Um, and then your server configurations are not be, are not run over and need manual input to to configure them, right? Um, and so again, depending on which way you go, there could be more uh, more pre work or more post work, depending. Um, but it, it all it all uh, depends on what your uh, is best for your business. Now, if you're not sure which way is the best way to go, um, we also have. Um, ways to get help with your upgrades, right? So we've got a ton of resources as far as upgrade documentation, um, steps, uh, an upgrade steps video uh, using the assessment upgrade tool. And of course, uh, a Cloudender uh, to DRS workshop module that has just been released recently. Um, and if still feeling like you're not quite sure on how you want to handle this, you can also engage a partner, right? So one, we have a list of partners that you have available here uh, and they offer a no cost uh, upgrade process for you. So what that means is that you'll get end-to-end -end assistance from the assessment phase, design, et cetera, helping you choose which one to do, as well as um, experience hands-on or hands-off if you don't want the partner uh, installing agents or anything. Uh, they'll, provide, they'll provide either of those options for you. Again, there's no cost and it frees up your teams to focus on other projects. Again, there's, it's no cost to you. It's funded by the AWS team, so you can... Say hey, we want to do we want to do this. Just choose the best option for us. Here's what we think we need to do, and then the partner can go ahead and 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 work with you on that and do the installation. The cons for this though is it may delay the project slightly, depending on your requirements to work with a partner. Right, if you have to go through a a, a legal process uh, and you're in a hurry to upgrade, th that process could take uh, significantly longer. Um, and it must be a partner that has signed with the AWS with AWS for this specific program. So if you're working with another partner already and they're not part of this program, uh, they would not be able to uh, issue that uh, funded um, uh, project uh, from the AWS team. Now, some success stories uh, in, the, in the different uh, options for you. So we for the upgrade tool, we had a financial services company with over 100 servers. Uh, and using the upgrade tool, they completed it in about three months. Right. Um, so it took them a, a little bit of time, but it was uh, it was best for the uh, data retention that they needed to use the upgrade tool. Uh, now, for the clean install, we had an ERP software provider who also did uh, over 100 servers. Their clean install took two months um, and this was done in a, in a phased approach. Uh, so they had to uh, do this during downtime. Uh, it took a little bit longer than just a straight install, but uh, was able to get them done in two months with very little very little um, holdup from the service side. And then from a partner led, we had the uh, we had an enterprise software uh, customer who upgraded over 300 servers and they completed within two months. And they, they used the, uh, I believe they used the upgrade path for that. So not only was it faster, more servers, uh, but using the partner led made it a lot simpler for them as well. So obviously, as I said, you have a few options. So how do you know which option to choose? you can run the assessment tool yourself <clears throat> and it'll tell you what, uh, the uh, level of errors and warnings that are needed to, and uh, how much effort you think it'll take to fix those or adjust those based on uh, just upgrade, uh, just doing a clean install with uh, AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery. Uh, you can validate if, uh, if working with a, an AWS partner is feasible. And then of course, uh, you can always speak with your account manager based on your findings. Uh, who may be able to give you some guidance on whether or not to go with a partner or what have you. Now, this is assuming that uh, you're ready to go and, and, and uh, Elastic Disaster Recovery has uh, all, of the, uh, all of the information you, or all the services that you need. But as I said before, there may need to be a reason why you want to delay on upgrading. Uh, and again, that can look like uh, needing to replicate to GovCloud. Right. Again, that is coming later on. 
uh, recovery to AWS outposts, um, or use of your recovery plans. Um, and so these are all coming. So while you may need to delay due to these, these requirements, uh, we do advise starting the planning process as soon as possible so you're ready to upgrade when the time comes. So you can always run that assessment tool um, and see the output, even if you're not looking to upgrade for, uh, for a few months still. Right? But either way, it's good to get that process started because it can be a long one. So next steps are review. Uh, next steps that are available for you are to review the upgrade videos and documentation. Uh, get familiar with the uh, AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery Service. You can engage a partner if that's something that's available to you, uh, to your company. Uh, and then create an upgrade plan for Cloud Endure DR to DRS. Uh, run that assessment tool, find out which process you may want to utilize. And then finally, of course, execute on that plan. Now, here's how you engage with the AWS DRS team. You can reach out to your account team, APN consulting partner, of course, AWS uh, Pro Professional Services as well. We can visit the AWS Elastic Disaster Recovery Console so you can start setting up and, get, and begin replicating servers. And of course, we do have an email available for you after this recording. Uh, should you want to send any questions, concerns, comments, or what have you, uh, you have the email address here. Uh, available for you to contact our team. And this is a resources slide, so feel free to uh, to capture this information as far as like the partners that are available for you. Uh, and again, utilize this information to reach out to your team. So again, thank you everyone for listening in. Uh, happy to uh, have provided the information for you on how to upgrade to Elastic Disaster Recovery. Again, the email down here at the bottom if you do have any questions. And we look forward to hearing from you. Take care.